Welcome to that second video on the Mass Effect uh, beginning and uh, introduction cutscenes uh, analysis. I told you a little bit about Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2 in the first video. Uh, you probably remember that Mass Effect 2 was released in 2010, still by Bioware, still a uh, part of, uh, of um, EA. Still a game that is a space opera where you follow the story of Shepard. Uh, there are a few things that you may want to know uh, in order to get into the first, uh, the, the second Mass Effect. Um, without too many spoilers, I will say that uh, you won against the enemy and the story still follows Shepard. And I think that's a fair summary for the people who played. Um, you probably know the the, 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 the rest and the, all the tension between you know elements of the story. Fortunately, this video that I found online uh, started off with a uh, the nice title screen that you have once you hit you know start you get or once you hit play you get that. I like it very much because it is one of these uh, interstitial spaces before getting to, um, you know, jump into the game. It puts you in a uh, mise en abime, you know, you're in front of your computer or your, your uh, PlayStation, maybe, or your whatever Xbox, your console. Uh, but you are given if you f as if you were sitting in front of your computer just the way you are yourself sitting in front of maybe a computer to watch my video or to play that game. The computer looks very high techy, you know, with the uh, uh, and still we have this very um, dull mix of colors, you know, these gunmetal y, uh, uh, grayish uh, uh, colors that are very close to how the Mass Effect universe works. You probably remember what I told you about the shape, you know, the arc um, as, you know, the, the symbol of Mass Effect. And that's what you have here very discreetly in the, um, in the M of Mass Effect. And you see that the two also follows it. That's the reason why it's all like lengthened. Uh, the font is close to also uh, what we saw in Mass Effect 1, so I'm not going to be um, talking too much about that. But it adds to the whole high-techy effect. You know, you, is that, um, the, the, the view takes you as if you were in the Normandy. You have this beautiful uh, screen that is very crisp. Not very, uh, it's very cold actually, yeah, you know, it's not very warm. But, you know, you have these nice colors. I'm just going to play it because uh, there is not much going on at the very beginning. You also have the Cerberus network here. And the player decides to play a new character. The mass effect that you see here is also uh, reminiscent of what we saw in the first game. Because it was one of the first images we were given. And here it just helps, you know, the uh, in title screen. Uh, Unfortunately, that person decides to turn off the subtitles, and I'm super sad about it. Um, I think, didn't they? Yes, I did. Uh, and we're starting off with a new character. Once this is over, I'm going to stop talking. Shepard did everything right, saving the Citadel, but leaving the Council to die. Humanity's place in the galaxy is stronger than ever, and still it's not enough. Humans may control the Council, but Shepard remains our best hope. But they're sending him to fight Geth. Geth. We both know they're not the real threat. The Reapers are still out there. And it's up to us to stop them. The Council will never trust Cerberus. They'll never accept our help. Even after everything humanity has accomplished. But Shepard... 
They'll follow him. He's a hero, a bloody icon. But he's just one man. If we lose Shepard, humanity might well follow. Then see to it that we don't lose him. Okay, I'm going to stop here and um, start talking a little bit about the situation that we just saw in these introductive um, um, sequences. You are giving a close-up of something that looks organic, which is actually a sun. Um, and you see two characters, Miranda, who gives us a summary of the situation. Um, through giving a small summary to the man whose position, the cigarette, the way he talks... Everything evokes a position of power, and he is known as the elusive man. Uh, once again, the same thing for Joker applies here uh, for him. His voice actor is Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen is a star, you know, is a, is a very important American actor. So uh, this also gives a little more depth to the character, and you probably heard that Miranda's accent was... Uh, not American, you know, not the way uh, the uh, uh, not, and she did not sound the way other characters sounded. Once again, we have a small situation with a man sitting in a weird office, very desolate place, with a beautiful woman telling him about uh, everything. She's beautiful, but she's dressed in a utilitary uh, combination of a rollish type of techy stuff. That's not a very scientific depiction, is it? But um, we are given an immediate rest interruption. And then, you know, it's interrupted by the uh, summary of the whole situation. Here, since this is the beginning of Mass Effect 2, without the decisions taken in Mass Effect 1, uh, the title card could have changed. You know, it could have been something different. It could have been the council was saved. It could have been something else. Uh, you see here the beginning of the uh, tension between an army of synths, uh, of synthetic people, uh, of synthetic uh, um, enemies, and the biological, the the uh, the living um, creatures that Shipper is part of. Um, and who got killed or saved according to the, the canon. But anyways, Shepard fought the Geth, and we have a real name for this um, enemy, or for rather for this core of enemy. Uh, I stopped here because once again we see the crescent with the light. Uh, it's not the same way it is usually. You know, usually it's a view from the top of the planet. Here it's from the bottom. That doesn't change much. After the first part of the sequence, let's see how it does. Um, I sh will probably not interrupt this this time because it's really self-contained, a unit. You know, the scene is a collection of little scenes. Uh, what I would like you to do is pay attention to what you see, to how many people are involved uh, and how involved they are. How do we see that they are involved? How do we see that they are important? Um, are there any motifs, uh, any patterns that you saw in Mass Effect 1, which could explain what you see in this beginning here? And if, uh, in case of an emergency or a catastrophe, in case of, a, you know, a, you build up to information and then you go up another level and then you go up another level and all that, I'd like you to also try and pinpoint these moments. Try and, and, and get the sense of the rhythm of uh, Mass Effect 2. We'll get to talk about it um, after, the, uh, the, the, after the title screen of Mass Effect.
Disengaging FTL drives. Emission sinks active. Board is green. We are running silent. We're wasting our time. Four days searching up and down this sector, and we haven't found any sign of Geth activity. Three ships went missing here in the past month. Something happened to them. My money's on slavers. The Terminus system is crawling with them. Picking up something on the long-range scanner. Unidentified vessel. Hmm. Looks like a cruiser. Doesn't match any known signatures. Cruiser is changing course. Now on intercept trajectory. Can't be. Stealth systems are engaged. There's no way a Geth ship could possibly... It's not the Geth. Brace for evasive maneuvers! Okay, it is way too tempting to um, have, you know, to have a little interruption here. The Normandy, uh, the Normandy sequence starts with the Joker. Uh, once again, jo oh, well, rather a Joker. Uh, Joker opens the dialogue. He is the funny one. He is with, uh, you know, he is here when you need him. And, and you recognize if you have played Mass Effect, several people... Uh, that are part, part of your crew that, that you get to love that, you know, that otherwise it's just people whose names you may have recognized from the first video. Uh, but once again, the, the first gaming moment that you get is the dialogue, um, same as with uh, Mass Effect 1. You only get to see Shepard after, you know, other characters have been introduced, uh, other more important characters, maybe in the uh, grand scheme of things. And you probably saw it, the balance between the music and other things uh, gets you know, distorted. We have this huge, I'm going to call that a spacecraft, you know, um, hovering around the Normandy and wrecking yeah, havoc and uh, destroying the Normandy, really, because that's what the catastrophe is about. And the catastrophe is right away. Um, the, the music gets louder with uh, 
the, the, the lack of action on screen and vice versa. And if there is a lot of action going on, the music gets a little inobtrusive. That's the reason why when Shepard, you know, argues at the beginning with the woman to know if she, uh, well, to, to uh, have her evacuate because that's Shepard's uh, main thing is to have people safe. That's also a defining moment for Shepard. You know, Shepard's trying to save people, trying to, 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 to get you know, his, his crew to safe, safety. But um, it's really like as if there was a need to populate the screen with, or the story with at least either the image or the sound. And that's, you know, when Shepard has to get to the cockpit, you have the reverse. And here, there's a tension. There's a tension between the silence and the only sound that you get to hear. This also helps get you a very immersive experience. And the immersivity of this experience feeds um, how, well, bad you feel for Shepard, who is about to die, basically. Okay, back to the main video. I'm sorry for interrupting the, this. One thing also you may need to know before, um, Joker is funny. He is a wise ass. He cracks jokes all the time. Uh, but uh, he suffers from osteogenesis uh, imperfecta, which is called brittle bone disease as well. La maladie des os verts en français, l'osteogenesis imperfecte, which means that you know he's uh, very fragile, that his body, you know, he is the pilot of this his, uh, origin story basically. Um, he does not leave the Normandy and he is very protective of her, the spaceship, because of, um, because he's a, he's a genius pilot and he is unable really, you know, to, to perform otherwise. I'm so sorry about the cat meowing in the background that you may have heard. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the cat. So uh, I shall resume the recording and maybe turn off my mic. Okay, I'm going to stop now for this introduction. 
you understood how dire the situation was, how terrible it is. You know, it's a catastrophe on top of another one. Uh, we know that most of the people will be saved, that Shepard saved Joker, but uh, maybe, uh, well, uh, Shepard is not going to survive. Actually, Shepard does not survive, by the way. Th this is one of the plot points. I'm not giving away much. Shepard does not live through the day the way um, they were. The fact that you alternate between breathing in and out with uh, when you're only given the shepherd sequences and, and, and you can see this is Milton. Um, he is a rescue and he only has one eye. Um, so sorry for Milton. Um, otherwise it would have meowed throughout the, the thing. Uh, yeah, so the back and forth between the breathing in and out of uh, of uh, Shepard when he is in costume uh, is a male here, but obviously Shepard could be a, a female as well. Uh, gives you a very close up approach to whatever is going on. You know, he's breathing, and then we see that his suit has a failure itself, and that well, he's not going to be able to breathe. He's drowning basically. Uh, you know, he's, he's running out of hair, suffocating. And then, you know, the uh, it zooms, you know, the, there's a pan down on the world. There's a pan away, uh, you know, rather the camera is panning away, zooming out to have us see the big crescent, the planet. And, um, well, the body of Shepard is lost. And I'm so sorry for the cat on my lap at this very, very tragic moment. Uh, I hope this doesn't take away, you know, from this explanation. The breathing is replaced by almost nothing. You know, we don't hear anything. We're just given this tentative piano notes uh, when the title screen appears. You know, there is a fade to black and then the title screen. This is much shorter. You know, it's more, much more self-contained. The, one of the big things we haven't talked about is uh, the disappearance of the Normandy itself. You know, the, the spaceship. It is almost a character, you know, at this point of the game. And personally, as a player, I was heartbroken when I saw that it was destroyed. It's one of the iconic uh, elements of the franchise as well. And uh, seeing it in such a terrible position is really hard on, on you know, players. This is such a big leap away from the... Uh, you know, usual zone of comfort of characters that it puts you in media stress of a very strange rest, you know, because there is a lot going on. Um, and it's also a beginning right after the, uh, the end of Mass Effect 1. Actually, Mass Effect 2 and the core of the, of the plot is going to take place much, you know, uh, a, a long time after what we just saw uh, because uh, the elusive man, the man that you saw in the chair at the very beginning is actually going to fetch Shepard's body and uh, well, have him brought, brought back to life. You know, We're given the introduction of a lot of mysterious characters that we don't really see. We see that the scope is changing once again. You know, we're not self-contained in the small spaceship then going on the planet, we are given, you know, the introduction of new characters that we don't know. Then uh, the catastrophe, the point of comfort, the zone of comfort that we know with the Normandy disappears entirely. So, um, you know, it's going to be a very different game. This one has really been praised for how well it was written, how good it was. Um, and as you can see, once again, this crescent shape that does really tie everything together. This responds to this, uh, obviously, you know, the crescent that we have here with this planet and the disappearance of Shepard. I will see you in the third video, which is more of a bonus than, than something else uh, about Mass Effect 3. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope we'll get to talk about it in, um, in class. 
or in the comments. And uh, well, thank you for watching and, and thank you for your patience with uh, with Milton.